Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Hasgik. Thank you, organizers and volunteers for sitting for having me here. Uh, good evening, everybody. Yeah. Let's try once more. Good evening, everybody. Awesome. So I'm Rohit. I work at uh, Ola, and today I'm going to share our experience of uh, setting up a centralized logging platform. We do uh, something which we do it at Ola scale, billion plus messages and 100k requests per second. So what is Greylog? Greylog is a log management software that actually works. It has lots of features like search, analysis, alerting, uh, pipelines, and a lot more we will see later. Now, before we look into this, how many of you are Ola users? Well, a good show of hands. So that basically explains we have volume. So Ola logging requirements is because all of you are using it. We have a huge volume, billion plus messages per day. And since all of you are simultaneously booking cabs, we have velocity. And uh, internally, Ola is powered by a lot of microservices. So we have hundreds of applications which are pumping, uh, pumping logs at the same time. And each of their application, all, all the applications may not log exactly the same way. They may have their own requirements. So we have a variety. Which category? So this is basically a typical big data statement. OK. How many of you heard about ELK? A lot, lot of you. ELK is a very popular stack and very widely used for uh, log management. Even at Ola, we used to use ELK a lot. But uh, we found that it is a bit maintenance intensive. Uh, and we often end up building on top of it. So we wanted something simpler, something which already has logging capabilities, something which uh, doesn't require day-to-day -day maintenance. So we were looking for an alternative. And we found Greylog. But why Greylog? First of all, if you uh, look at the name, the Greylog itself has the word log. It is designed for logging. It is designed for solving just one problem, which is catered towards logging. All its features are towards logging and not, uh, not uh, anything else. Well, in case of ELK, it may be used for other, other, other things as well. It is a generic platform. Some of the features is a beautiful UI, which can be used for log searching. Uh, you can also see on the top right the throughput, which, is, which was at that moment. Uh, we, we can search based, in our case, we are searching based on application. I don't think that is visible. Uh, we can have beautiful dashboards. In this case, the dashboard is based, uh, dashboard is for an application called Heka. And uh, the message train for the last one day is being shown over here. Then there's a message count for one day. Uh, the cardinality as the number of unique messages it's, it's a quick values is a uh, pie chart with showing the messages which occur most frequently, like the top one which is having is occurred 3.28 percent. This is a small application, so it is not logging heavily. Okay, Elast Greylog is again powered by Elasticsearch. It uses Elasticsearch to store all its data and query the results. Uh, the good thing about Greylog is that you can manage everything, manage all the Elasticsearch indices from the UI itself. And it gives you a lot of flexibility to, uh, to manage indices based on time, message size, or even the message count. So this is a sample configuration in which uh, each of the index, index is of 40 million, can store 40 million max records and 250 of them can be can be present at any point of time so this is basically a configuration for storing 10 billion records several input and output options greylog has pipeline support 
uh, and uh, just like uh, it can take messages from a variety of sources. In this example, you can see I've just searched Kafka, and there are three different modes of taking input from Kafka. Uh, we can take input from syslog, from TCP. There are other options as well, like RabbitMQ. Again, output can also be a variety of different uh, uh, plugins. Uh, there are some, uh, some of the plugins are built in the Greylog itself. Some are community supported. Uh, some uh, you can also write your own. Real time log analysis and reporting. So we can create streams based on some criteria. For example, an application name can be a criteria. We can create alerts on on streams. So as we are get, getting the data for that application, we might grab some particular line and trigger a page duty if that is of importance or maybe on message count. So there can be a variety of uh, real-time log analysis and alerting. Now, it's a, from the feature-wise, wise, it looks very good. Uh, we start, did a POC, and we had a journey. A few months back, we started exploring the alternative. Uh, we came up with a, a pipeline, and uh, we thought it was great, but we ran into a lot of problems and learnings, which I'm going to share today. So this was the, this was the initial pipeline. So we tested it on staging. It worked fine. We, uh, we, uh, Docker is powering most of our microservices. There are tons of microservices. And all the applications are logging to standard out which can be cached by a Docker logging driver. We are using a Fluentd log driver instead of the default one, which writes into file. This, is, this in turn is sending the traffic to Fluentd on a TCP port. Fluentd is a data collector. It can collect data from a variety of sources as you configure it. It can process it in real time and uh, send, it to other, uh, send it to various destinations. Over here, we are using Fluentd as a dumb box. It will just receive the input in TCP and forward the message to Kafka. Why, why not directly to Kafka? Because a Kafka logging driver doesn't exist for Docker. If that existed, probably we would have used that. Kafka is a pub pub published subscribe system. It, uh, Fluentd is writing the messages to one of its topic. Any number of uh, applications can write to a topic at any point of time, and there can be a number of uh, applications consuming from it. So Kafka, uh, Kafka is receiving the messages, and you have to subscribe to the messages. So we have another Fluentd, which is subscribing the messages from Kafka, then formatting it in a GELF format, Greylog extended log format, before sending it to Greylog in a UDP port, because we believed network would be reliable. And UDP is fast. Greylog had, a, uh, Greylog had two components, Greylog server and web server. The Greylog server has all the functionality, while Greylog web server is just a wrapper on top of Greylog server, which will call the REST APIs to show the UI. And Elastic Search is used for storing the messages. Now, a first problem happened. The Fluentd container consuming was dead slow. Uh, we believed it is sending the messages to UDP, it should be fast, and it was consuming from Kafka in real time. So Fluentd should not have any problem. What we did, we upgraded the diff all the versions for different uh, uh, components. As you see, in Greylog, now the two components in is merged into one. That is, the in the new version, we got this upgrade. We tried out beta. REST API and UI is in the same box. But the problem is still not solved. The problem was at the Fluentd uh, GELF plugin. So this was slow. What we did in the new version of Greylog, we, we saw that it already has a Kafka support. We started formatting the messages at the source itself before sending it to Kafka in a GELF format. And uh, Greylog is able to collect the messages from Kafka and also 
index it very well. So the first problem case solved. What could go wrong next? Our Docker processes started, uh, daemons started crashing. We used to get PG duty that in a production box, uh, Docker daemon crashed. And when Docker daemon crashed, all the containers will crash. Why? Because uh, of the simple reason, we some we onboarded few more applications, and it was it was logging at huge, it was logging heavily, and the buffer buffer of Lindy was full. So it crashed. But uh, why should a Docker daemon crash because of something less important like logging? So we thought probably we should upgrade. We did upgrade to, we read some articles, we upgraded to latest version of Docker. We also read few articles which suggested upgrade the kernel to 4.2. We did, we did all that, but now instead of crashing, crashing after say every four hours, it was crashing at every five hours. But the problem is still not solved. Yeah, so forget uh, the fancy terms. Don't use uh, uh, the Fluentd log driver. Use native log driver, which is which writes to file in the JSON format, JSON file log driver, and we will use tail plugin in Fluentd to tail the files and uh, then send it to the pipeline. So this was the solution. I've just removed that component because it is now independent. So it will tail stream all the logs by reading from the files. It it automatically detects the new files when and when new containers are created, and the pipeline goes well. We are happy. Again we got into another problem, huge log messages. Now, mm, any idea what could go wrong when we receive such huge messages? Elasticsearch indices are powered by Lucene, which supports a max of uh, 32 KB. I saw a message which was 3 MB, a single message. Of course, it will raise a exception and gray log is, uh, is will try to send the message again and again five times before finally discarding me the message. And Greylog will not send the uh, other messages until this message is either sent successfully or discarded. So there's a huge lag. Solution, either truncate the message or divide it into multiple parts. We, we decided we'll just uh, truncate the message we came up with the uh, 8 KB as the max field size, which uh, the JSON will support. And the problem is solved because exceptions will not happen if the message, uh, messages, message size is small. Number fourth, now our uh, platform is kind of popular. More, more developers are interested in onboarding their application to Greylock, but they are not into the traditional. Uh, they are not into the modern uh, Docker platform. They are running it, uh, running it on the system, like the box. So their application is generating the messages in JSON format in the files. We need to tail the files and send it to the pipeline. So that's what we did. New apps onboarded, which were not on Docker. Now what happened? Some uh, some of the applications may have similar keys, like for example, status as success or true. It can also be an integer as one. What happens that this, this detail is sent to Kafka, Greylog, and finally it reaches Elasticsearch. The first time it comes to Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch maps the data type, uh, associates a data type with this field. If the field is uh, if the first message received is status equals to true, it will map it as boolean. The next message comes as success, it will throw an exception. That's what that that was happening. So what we did, the logic is simple. At Fluentd level, we uh, since we have we are powered by like hundreds of microservices, different teams sending the details to us. We wanted to solve it at our end. So what we did, convert everything to string before sending it to the pipeline, since all the data types are string, it will not uh, throw an exception. Now, uh, we, had a f we had a very, uh, d we had many components, but we realized that we are using buffer at each level. So whenever some problem happens, 
we have to look at each of the component where is the lag they, they can be lag at uh, the first component second or third is the is buffer at each level necessary we found the answer is no uh, we the first the first one fluentd is actually telling the log files so the file can act as a buffer we have kafka as uh, we want kafka to have the uh, storage to store the data for two two days so it acts as a buffer at graylog we can throttle the input to match the output so graylog it's not necessary it can always replay the message from kafka it is not needed a final problem fluentd is uh, telling the files sending to kafka but uh, we experienced uh, message loss and sometimes delay why because the fluentd kafka plugin was not fast enough it was written in ruby and uh, it was designed to be simple but not performant we adding more cpu and ram will not help so what we we searched for an alternative luckily we found a project called heka uh, it is a mozilla sponsored project and heka is uh, written in go very performant what we experienced that uh, it can do all the things which fluentd can do plus it has more features but complicated so heka with heka we exp we saw we are now 10x cpu friendly 5x memory friendly now finally who all said and who liked it developers because we have a centralized uh, uh, Center, uh, we have user authentication they can log into the pr they can check the logs directly they can do quick rcs debugging in staging as well as production we can sleep for some more time and the management can see beautiful dashboards get more insights and visibility you can also try it yourself this is something which i did few hours back uh, we have uploaded a graylog docker image you can just run three these three commands you will have a graylog setup ready to use uh i think uh, that's it i've i'll just explain one more thing that is the kafka layer Kaf the reason why kafka exists is because uh, kafka can with kafka we can take another pipeline and use it for long time archival purpose like secor can we are using secor for pushing the messages to s3 at the same time while graylog will have the messages for say 7 days Yeah, I think uh, we should open up for Q and A. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. So, uh, looks like you pretty much replaced uh, L and K of ELK stack with right. the Greylock server. Right. So, what were the main benefits that you uh, got out of removing? Because it seems like you're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. So, what was the benefit? And In my experience, most of the problems that happens is because of Elasticsearch. That's correct. So the main advantage of having Graylog is that you get everything at a central place. When you are using ELK, you often end up end up building on top of it. Like you will be configuring the log stack shipper with uh, you will be writing all those configurations. You will be using Kibana for uh, viewing the logs. You get all those features at a central place. That is the biggest benefit. and of course uh, it has tons of other features i mean uh, what is the feature that's what i was looking for huh the feature like uh, streaming support uh, the elk i think the log stack has that support so it is similar the basic the basic idea is uh, when yeah, i understand it's an alternative but uh, huh. is there anything major benefit that you derived out of it which was not there in elk the major benefit is that today i want to manage elastic search based on message count tomorrow i may want to use it based on time and all of the those i can do it with a single click of a button that is the major benefit i have experienced second is that uh, uh, with elk uh, a, we we will be building on top of it to actually make a mini graylog so logstash shipper and Rab rabbitmq all those come into picture and over here graylog comes into picture from the cpu cycles perspective it will be similar 
and we found this as a better alternative. It can ELK can also do the sim similar things. Uh, hello. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question. This is actually a Gelp driver for, for, from Docker itself. So yeah, have you tried right. that? Right. I mean, it also has the same problem of uh, buffer which you had with Fluent driver. No. Actually, we wanted Kafka to be in between. Okay. Okay. So the if it had uh, Gelp Kafka plugin, we would have probably probably used use that. We tried out uh, that. It works beautifully. It can send messages directly to the uh, Greylock server. So there's no buffer issue which we had, which you had with Fluent. Uh, it sends, uh, we were using it with uh, UDP. So UDP, if yeah, the there buffer, there's no problem with the buffer, right? If the destination is not receiving the messages, messages will be lost. Okay. okay. TCP is also there, but uh, I think uh, UDP is more used than TCP. Hello. Uh, I'm afraid that's all we have time for now. Okay. Uh, uh, the next speaker will have to get on. So uh, you can take your questions offline. Thank you.